Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Most are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores thinking world flat. I'm with the island girls in celebration of new religion. Nobody led me or said this way. I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion. Fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess new disposition. Seekers of lost paradise may seem fools to those who never sought the other worlds. Welcome to Momentary Zen with Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv You're listening to Revolution Radio. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen here on Revolution Radio, and I have a special guest with me this evening, Professor Truth. Professor, you there? I'm here, Zen. It's quite an honor. Thank you. Uh, likewise. Uh, it's uh, my honor as well, and I uh, always enjoy the fellowship and looking forward to the discourse this evening. We will be talking about and elaborating somewhat on the Warn heaven and its connections to the enmity between the seed lines as played out in Genesis 3.15 and as we see um, occurring all around us with the New World Order uh, and its war against humanity. And so it's most certainly uh, the end and the beginning and all things in between. And so if you would, can you give out your website contact information where people can get to uh, go and support your work my website when it's up will be professortruth.com and simulatrix.com that simulation plus matrix or simulatrix.com they're not up yet my youtube is under truth w christ and my soundcloud page is under truth w christ all right excellent um and so uh, I sent you the manuscripts for the great contest and wanted to ask you if you had uh, gotten a chance to peruse any of the material um, and as far as where you wanted to start with the discussion. Did you want to just uh, begin with the war in heaven? Because that seems to be, you know, the um, where it all began as far as the enmity between light and darkness and the separation of the powers. Yes, I did actually, Zen, read quite a, a bit of your great contest, and it's absolutely amazing, as as always. Um, I like how you didn't really repeat Sons of God too much, but you kind of built upon it. So, in other words, you didn't go over the seven days of creation in detail like you did in Sons of God, but you built upon it in your new trilogy. And... Um, there were several subjects. I, I think what g the God has led me tonight to do is try not to repeat what we've covered in the past and just build uh -huh. upon it, if that's okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, most certainly. And plus, we're gonna we're gonna set some new grounds for your listeners and go. How high do you want to fly? Instead of how low do you want to go? With most of the Darby Schofield crowd, how high do you want to fly with those that are born from above? and uh, truly set free. The truth will what? Make you free. So we're going we're gonna to go into some powerful things. As far as your book is awesome, Zen, I, I'll just, before we get started, I'll just say I really enjoyed your description of the Trinity, you know, Sophia, the Father, the Son of God, yet you clearly, and I was looking for this, you know I would be, you clearly say they're all one, uh, yet they're all three uh, attributes, like Father, Son, Sophia, Holy Spirit, and just like we are, body, soul, and spirit, but we're not three separate people. And I really mm -hmm. enjoy 
your discussion of Yahweh. So one area I have, I have a whole lot of show notes, and so I'm going to talk fast as I always do. Um, one area that we can get into, and it depends on how deep you want to go, but I'm ready to go into Yodhe Vahe, the Tetragrammaton, and explain its uh, 12 strand plus one, 13 DNA strands, but I'd probably want to save that for a little later. But my point is, your book's awesome, and I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm, I'm up through the part on uh, Yahweh and the Trinity and, and all that sort of thing. It's really, really nice. Oh, well, excellent. Um, I'm glad that you, know, that you have had uh, the time to get through some of that material. And since you brought it up, um, I wanted to ask you if it was clear within the book, because um, most certainly I receive a lot of heat for uh, in describing the Holy Spirit as a, a feminine principle, which in my opinion, it's, it, it is firmed in the canonical material as well as the apocryphal which was part of the original 80 book canon of the king james version of the bible but um if you do the research on this absolutely it is clear that the holy spirit is described as a she and so i wanted to ask you what you thought about that and whether i was able to uh, bring forth that in, in clarity God works in threes. There's a Trinity, oh, although the Trinity is actually not in Scripture for your listeners, but it is a clearly taught concept. And the when I read your book, the the references you use clearly support the feminine aspects of what you call Sophia. Now I have I had not heard Sophia before except from your other writings, but. Uh, you know, I, I work with you, Pastor Eli, and Brother John, another group of three, for the end time teachers here for different swim lanes. And you and I have what I call the big picture, how all the pieces fit together. And so, to answer your question, I thought you you supported it extremely well with this, the the uh, many apocryphal as well as scriptural references. Okay, great. Um, because I know that this is something that is still considered to be radical with regard to uh, scripture. But again, in studying it in, in the way that I presented it, um, of course, I build upon the foundation of the canon and the apocryphal text, but uh, certainly this is a biblical concept which is encoded all throughout the ancient manuscripts. And so it is indeed biblical um, and is not antithetical at all uh, to what is taught as concept within the scriptures. And, and as you said, with regard to the Holy Trinity, uh, it's not something that is clear, but again, this is also teaching that is encoded throughout the, the text, as I show with Proverbs 1, uh, 3, and 8, and how wisdom, as the Holy Spirit is regarded as having pre-existed with Christ and the Father, and that they together represent the nucleus of what is the the human family, uh, the mother, father, and holy child, and that certainly this is also representative with the way that even uh, a male and female come together in holy matrimony and becoming one flesh, then beget progeny uh, to continue the bloodlines. And so all of that is tied to the what I reference as the second phase of the great contest, which is the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent as it plays out uh, until the second advent of Yeshua in his second coming. And that at that time, the harvest will be uh, separated and the wicked and the, the righteous will be gathered and counted uh, depending on the, their determination uh, with either those that go into paradise and have a, um, a return to their first estate or those that are counted with the wicked and the children of perdition. Yeah, and I felt, you know, you mentioned something there that I actually 
read for the first time in your book, but you know, it, when you hear the truth, it just rings true. Let's just put it that way. And your description, which you just went over, which I do remember reading uh, just the last couple of days about the father and the, the female aspect and then begotting the son. I was also very pleased that you made a distinction between begotten and created and made. Very few people, most people just kind of ignore the details, but those are very important details. And and I was very impressed with that. Um, I'll make one comment about the, the Trinity concept from a quantum physics perspective, and then we're going to really take this jet off the ground if it's okay with you, Brother Zen. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, for your listeners, what, what Zen is saying is, and first of all, we've all been indoctrinated by the church beast system, false prophet system, to be more exact. And I'm not saying the people that go to church are bad, and I'm not even saying the leaders are all bad, but many are emissaries of Satan uh, disguised as uh, teachers of light. So, But what, I, what I'm saying is, from a quantum physics perspective— Think of it like this. You have, think of the, let, the the shape of the letter Y. And using wave particle duality, you have each arm of the Y the, the, at 120 degrees apart. One represents the Father, one represents the Son, and one represents the Spirit of Truth or Sophia. Now, in a quantum matrix, think of them as light, because God is light, God is spirit, spirit is light, but it's a different kind of light, supernatural in a sense. It's it's uh, beyond our understanding, but as they converge at the center of the Y, you, you have zero time. So you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit going in and out of wave-particle duality, at, but they converge at a concentric circle in the in the center, and that center is a tetragrammaton, Yahweh, yod heh vah -He. and that's, yeah, where, absolutely. that's where zero time is and a singularity. That's why God can exist, the Father, Yah Yahweh, yod heh vah -He, which is different than the Father. Yahweh is actually the tetragrammaton, and, and later, or now, I could get into the, the codes. Yahweh is, is God. I mean, it's not a computer code, but it's beyond our comprehension, but Yahweh exists at outside of time space, and it, but as soon as you manifest as either the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit, you have introduced light. And when you introduce light, you introduce motion, time, space. And when you introduce motion and time, space, now you've introduced dimensional and vibrations. But at the center, where they all converge, there is a singularity of zero time, zero space, the eternal I am. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and uh, I, I, I'm glad that you actually brought that up because, in my opinion, in the beginning, uh, as it says in John chapter 1, uh, that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit pre-existed and as the Godhead brought forth all of creation from the invisible to the visible and that everything step down in vibration from its source which is light and that that light in stepping down in vibration and and slowing manifested as um all of what we see in visible creation and, and that but its source is from the singularity the invisible um the force that is and was and is all things and that brought forth the great mystery out of itself and that even we are part of that singularity and we have a connecting link which is christ within us and it's that aspect of ourselves which pre-existed with them and that this is our immortal um bright natured self and that aspect of us that can as long as we accept the grace and the salvation uh, through Christ uh, as our King and our Lord, as our Savior, Messiah, that that is the aspect of ourselves which will go back and have a return to our former estate because our inheritance is paradise. And we were not made here on the earth, but our flesh bodies are made of the dust of the earth. And 
it is to dust that our bodies will return, but our immortal spirits go on to uh, a, an eternal inheritance with or without Christ, depending on uh, you know whom we choose to serve. Absolutely, and you mentioned John chapter one, brother John. We do a, every Sabbath. We do the weekly w word or weekly wisdom, and we cover just the word of God, like you. Then my show here with you is called The Big Picture. My show with Eli is called The Great Impersonation. And the show with Brother John is just called Weekly Word. And we just go through the word and we do what you did in your book and you emphasized in the introduction to your book. We do word studies and we talked about this last time, so I won't dwell on it. You have to do word studies. When you do word studies on John chapter one, and I'm going by memory because we cover this every week on The Weekly Word. Instead of in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, here's what it means when you do the word study. In the commencement of the order of time, the, div the divine expression came from the supreme divinity. And I'm not going to go through the whole verse, but I want you, that's a whole different, deeper level of meaning. So commencement of the order of time and that's kind of what we're talking about in this letter Y shape, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When God, when Yahweh, and I used to not say Yahweh, you know, Zen, Zen knows me, I'm the sand shark, and I would even debate Zen and everybody else. But they have convinced me uh, that Yahweh, and, and where I'll just divert slightly. I'm always cautious because the enemy has counterfeited everything. There's there's a trinity again, and I have that in my notes to go over later tonight. There's an in, in 3D, what I call our current realm of vibration in 3D, different than what I call HD, higher dimension. In 3D, our current realm, there's an authentic and always a counterfeit. And guess what? Then there's an HD version of the same thing. So there's a Trinity concept there too. So if it's okay with you, Zen, I'll, I'll just jump to Yahweh and go into a quantum physics explanation as quickly as possible, because there really is some, this show, if, if you let me loose, is going to be something, nothing like you've ever heard. I got some clips to play and a whole bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, that would be fine. But I, I, I would implore you to uh, to please elaborate for those that have not heard our previous work as to the uh, the detailed explanation of John chapter 1 before moving on, because I think that is very important, and so I don't want to just glance over that. And uh, I think it would be beneficial to the listening audience for you to elaborate further on that before we move into the other aspects of what we're going to cover this evening. Okay. Well, in Zen's book, Sons of God, who, to, in my view, to this day, is a monumental book that, uh, for all of mankind, he very much goes into detail, let there be light, and there was light, and I believe you said that was on the second day. And, first, uh, day. Uh, first day, okay. But until then, there, the angels, the created angels, not the begotten and not later, let us make man, the created angels were in darkness. So, John chapter one is so profound because you have four gospels, which represent your four, four, your, your, your body is the temple. In the Old Testament, they gave explicit dimensions to the temple. But if you, if you, if you study them and in the new covenant, new contract, your body is the temple. For example, the two pillars in front of Sol Solomon's temple were called Jacob and Boaz in, in Freemasonry, but they each were 23 cubits tall. Well, those are your current 3D double helix with 23 chromosomes apiece. So I could go on and on and, and go through all the aspects of the old to contract Old Testament design of the temple and show you it's exactly designed to be a replication of your your body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we find that out in the New Testament. But the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are representative of your four base pairs in your double helix, guanine, cysteine, thymine, and uh, uh, guanine, cysteine, thymine, and alanine, I believe. But anyway, that, that's what they represent, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four base pairs between the double helix, which is two of your 12 strands, which we'll get into later, but they're the two 
3D strands, and then God works in threes. We're talking about the Trinity. So we've heard a lot about this triple he. I'm, I'm gonna, I haven't forgotten Zen. I'm going to get back to John 1 here in a second. Yeah, no worries. My mind works like storyboarding. So in your 2D double helix, you have a triple helix. And guess what? The enemy made you think that, oh, only the fallen angels have this and the Luciferians have this evil triple helix. Well, they actually do have a triple helix, but it's a counterfeit. Remember, we talked about an authentic, a counterfeit, and then an HD. Now, what is this triple helix from our original creation? It is a light pipe conduit. Think of it like that. Your DNA's primary function is a light transceiver of Holy Spirit light, or sp let me just say spirit light, because even, even a flower has consciousness, okay? So, but in, in your temple, it's a conduit that in Revelation 3, Yeshua says, if I knock and you open the door and let me sup with you, I shall come in. Well, you're dead until you make the free will choice to let, to step off our temple of pride and ego and, and, and in humility, let Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach step on. And when you do that, that triple helix strand that is resident in all of us, but we're, it's dead. That's why Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. You're dead until you're activated, and you only can be activated by the uh, uh, Sophia or the spirit of truth. But when you're activated, not only are your double helix activated, but you have 10 unseen light codes. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Now back to John chapter one. Why is it so just foundational? Well, the gospels also are bringing out different aspects. And I always like the gospel of John because it's more let's just say, brings out the spiritual truths of the Most High in extreme detail. And in the commencement of the order of time, well, there's your Zen's day one, let there be light. That commencement of the order of time was what? The divine expression. Divine, that means God, expression. That means a sh type and shadow of God was imprinted, blueprinted, into our domain. Actually, in that case, it was let there be light into the cosmos. If you look up the word world, it doesn't mean all the people. I'm going to break some of your foundations. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And, and we're, all, we're all lied to by the church that that means world is people. It has nothing to do with people. World means cosmos, his order of creation in the commencement of the order of his creation and time. And that time initiated with light, the first Christophany, or I guess they call it the manifestation of God begotten as Yeshua, as light. Okay, that is your commencement of the order of time was the divine expression, let there be light, of the supreme divinity that we're calling Yahweh. Okay, which started at zero time at the singularity. Does that help, Zen? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because, you know, it, I believe that John chapter 1 is so deeply profound because it tells you the, about the preexistence of Christ with the Father and the Holy Spirit and that they together brought forth all things that we see and are. And so they are the source the force for all that is, the unfolding of the great mystery as uh, we are speaking about and talking about here. Absolutely. So now Zen and I and the true truth teachers will all be hated. And you're going to hate me more tonight as we go on. But, you know, I don't hate you. I love everybody. We're, we're taught to, you know, J Yeshua told us to even love your enemies. Okay. So I love all of you guys. Zen loves you all. And I know Zen does because I've, I've looked into Zen's eyes and only saw love. So last time we covered the foundation of our of Zen and I, my common, you know, really this, we're, I don't even call it research in my case and, or Zen's case because wisdom is a gift. Faith is a gift, not of our own. But the essential teachings are serpent seed. Some in Christian identity or Christian Israel, which I believe is a foundation, um, it's called two seed line theology, but it's the same thing, serpent seed. And I'm going to play a clip here in a minute that takes us out of the re realm of theory or 
you know, Zen's ideas and my ideas or our research. I'm going to play a clip here in a minute that we're going to put this to bed. You know how, Zen, I like to put things to bed, at least for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear. You know, in fact, let's, Proverbs 2012 says, again, everything's a gift. See, we think everything that we do, you know, come to the altar and be saved. That's just a lie. Proverbs 2012, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. So just the ability to understand and see is, is a gift from God based on your obedience to Ecclesiastes 12, 13. The whole duty of man is to fear God in love and keep his commandments. So we covered serpent seed last time, which is a foundational doctrine. Because if you don't know Genesis 3.15, really, like we said last time, the war in heaven, which Zeno, by the way, in your, your book, you really do an excellent job of describing how, you know, when, when Jesus was crucified and resurrected, he said, it is finished, tell us die. And at that time, uh, the, the devil and his angels were cast out of heaven. See, people think this is some future event. No, why do you think the world's so wicked? I mean, uh, wake up, people. It already, they're, they're here now, okay? So the essential teachings are serpent seed, the satanic Idumean issue and the hybrids, that's number one. The n number two essential teaching, which Zen and I ha haven't gone over, but Eli and I go over this, are the 12 lost tribes. Who are they? Where are they? And you'll know them by their fruit. And this includes Zen and others. It includes... The, the, the elect, the 12 lost tribes, but also those with the blood of Adam that are here with the, clearly the activation of that triple helix I told you about with, this, with the spirit of truth. And you'll know them by their fruit, their fruit. And the third essential teaching is really what Zen covers in both his Sons of God and his new book, why we are here at all and the war in heaven and earth. So um, I'll, I'll read one quote. And then I'll let Zen comment, and then I'll play a clip, which will validate serpent seed, and then we can move on. And this quote is by a G.R. Gurdjieff. I've never really heard of the guy, but the quote was something I want you guys to ponder. Because last time Zen and I were pondering amongst ourselves, we we teach, and Zen has, I mean, amazing teachings. He, he continues daily, weekly, endlessly with profound truth, yet so few respond. And I, I made a quick comment on our last show. Well, that's because then they're not people. <laughs> okay. Well, listen to this quote. A considerable percentage of the people we meet on the street are people who are empty inside. That is, they are actually already dead. It is fortunate for us that we do not see and do not know it. If we knew what, what number of people are actually dead and what a number of these dead people govern our lives, we should go mad with horror. G.I. Gurdjieff. I don't know who he is. <laughs> okay. And I just want to add to that. It has been estimated by uh, Dr. David Jacobs and other researchers into, let's just get to the point, into, quote, alien abduction, that 80% of the Earth's population has been abducted. And I'll just say that in one of my conversations with Colonel S.C., he was on a craft and he saw almost his entire his entire blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear for verily i say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them yeshua said i will open my mouth in parables i will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world Professor. That's a repeat of Proverbs 2012, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. I want to make one upfront statement. Jesus Christ is God, my King, my Lord, and every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus Christ, because I heard a lot of, quote, new age, close quote, commercials. You need to be careful, because we're in the truly the judgment time seconds to midnight and every knee shall bow. And if you read the book of Enoch, it doesn't turn out well for most. So I'm going to, so I just got through saying that 80, the reason people don't hear Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is because they, they no longer are people. And I, that, that clip I have later, which is on clones and it'll, it'll go into uh, 
Uh, and this is a first, by the way. This is a first. I have never played. I have a massive private collection. And I'm not stupid enough to play it all for just anybody or even if I ever will. Because that, you know. But 80% of the population is estimated to have been alien abducted. Aliens are fallen angels. Okay. And Colonel S.C. told me one time he was on a craft and his entire town, just about everybody in his town was on that craft on beds, you know, metal, metal tables. And he, because he, he has special giftings, they're not, I'm not going to go into that here. So I'm not at liberty to tell you what he actually is because we're different things here. Many are on assignment. Uh, they cannot harm him unless he is in sin and unrepentance, but they can't touch God's holy elect. And Colonel S.C. saw many human bones in different parts of the craft of, of people that have been discarded or replaced. So now, back to the subject of serpent seed, Genesis 3.15. Instead of Zen's ex extensive research or my experiences or, or Colonel S.C.'s experiences, let's just listen to something. And I'm not claiming it's true. You make the call. Which I'm going to talk about later. There was literally, I, I believe, I, I didn't count them, but it was long. It was There was about 100 glass rooms, and, and in each one of them that I walked past. Zen, this is talking about the Hall of Horrors that you asked on last show, okay? Excellent. Just so you know. It was more right. gruesome than the other. This was a Dulce, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And the last one had a child in it. And that's the only one I asked about. I said, what's he doing there? He said, we let him out the whole, he'll eat everybody in the whole world and kill everything. He'll eat everybody. He'll kill everybody, kill everything. A child. I said, well, how do you feed it? Yeah, it was a child. All I seen was a poor kid. Now, I, I know I was, it was demonic probably, but you know, they give you a sad look and I was looking at the poor kid he's trying to make him feel bad. He goes, that way we feed him is there's three, or four, I can't remember, three or five, it was, a, it was a bunch of chambers that were steel this thick. It had hydraulic doors that they dropped the food in and then the other one would drop it in and it had to go through that many chambers because he got out. That was the end of it all. And I said, does he have a soul? Yep. I said, you're in trouble when you open them chambers because a little bit of them's getting out every time because he's a demon. And I promise you that he can get out of there because you're not God. And I heard the uh, only thing that people that are not believers hear about is John 3, 16 and the end of the world stories. And the only thing that I remember my mom talking about, some demons were so evil they had to be chained up in front of the angels of the Lord or somebody to be watched. So is that, and you're not God. If there is one. So you were yeah. underground, Dulce. You saw this child in the chamber, and then yeah, then and then they he pushed a button. All the chambers went to where they could see the, the all the things that were in there could see us. We couldn't see them. It was like a hidden glass. You couldn't see it in the dark. Fluorescent lights all out there. So we're sitting at this table, and they're talking about things. And I'm sitting there, and I am scratch man. I'm really wondering why I am. And then it came to the question, why did you bring him? And now this guy knew who I was. I guess the general thought he was going to fool him, and which I was available and he grabbed me. He goes, is he 27? And the general got scared because I know, I watched the general. That guy already knew, like he knew, just knew some things about the future. The guy asking the question, is he a 27? Was mm -hmm. this the one that will, that would shape shift or was this somebody else? No, he, the, the shape shifter, there was, there was a scientist asked the general why he brought me in here. Well, so everybody says, Dale, come hear your thoughts. I was thinking on purpose. I said, I was thinking, I'm going to pull this gun out in two seconds. I'm going to blow his brains out. I'm blow them all out. Didn't know what I was thinking. They would have reacted to that. That's the only reason I did that. I wasn't really good at this thing. You were testing if they could mm -hmm. read your mind. But you know what they were doing? At the end of that hall, it was a dead end. 
concrete wall. But beautiful naked women, the utmost beauty, were coming out, walking past. Coming out of the end. I don't know. I couldn't see because when you went to the door, you couldn't see the end. It kind of, there's a window there and you just couldn't see the end unless you stepped outside the door. I don't know if you could look real close to the window, but I was in the corner of the room. And I seen them and they were, I looked. He goes, they're luscious, aren't they? He says, you can have any one of them right now and they will screw you to death. That's what he told me. You were still sitting at this table. Yeah. I said, they're not real. He goes, oh yeah. He said, come here. He went like this, most want to come in. And she went in there and started robbing on these stuff. She felt real. And I said, they're holograms. He said, how do you know they're holograms? I said, I can feel it like static shock, like electricity on me. They're not human. Because you're right. He said, but they can do, make you feel just, when, when you, you can have sex with one, you would be just like a real woman. We'll give them to you. And I said, where do they come from? And he pulled out of a drawer and a glass table. I never seen a glass table with a drawer. Had a wooden drawer on it. I don't know how it was mounted for super glued or what, but it was there. So in a drawer, he had a box about this big. He says, I can get her and put her, tell her to go in there and you can take it home and have it forever. He could have the woman go in the little box? Yeah, and, it, and he'd give me the little box and I could keep it forever. Time I open the box, she'll come out. Uh, that's what he told me. I don't know if they could have done or not. Okay, well. I, I, I didn't. I, I, no, I, I ain't doing that. Okay, but when did they shape shift and what did it look like? He shape shifted after he chewed the. Uh, general bring me down there and I at, then I asked the question what am I down here for and he and they nobody nobody ever did answer me and then he finally was chewing that guy out and he goes well and then the guy that was going to shake shift said well let's see how he handles this and I knew they were talking about me they didn't say my name so I looked at him in the eyes and I went that's how I went I went what and then he started doing it I seen these digital things and I wasn't afraid because I seen those women and I knew they were holograms and I said, he's just a hologram. And so he came in there and he was just, anyway, it was digital looking, but he turned reptilian, just like the ones that you see in V and his clothes dissipated. They didn't tear off like in Hulk. They didn't, he didn't take them off. They just dissipated and blended in. And, and he looked like something on V, that movie V. And I remember trying to look at his feet because the glass was at a certain angle that the glare was so bad I couldn't see under it. And I was going like this. And so he went like this. He knew what I was trying to do. And so he went like this. And he had claws on his feet and clawed hands. And he says, I could be anything I want to be. I said, I mean, anything living? He goes, no. I could be a tree, a door, I could do anything. Just a ask me. I said, well, uh, my grandmother always told me to be afraid of the devil and not God. And I don't know which is which, but you know what? I'm not going to talk to you no more. And I said, gave him the finger and I said, all of you, including you, General, can go to hell. Yeah, you can get in trouble for that. I said, throw me out, please. Okay, so what you just heard, maybe we made it up, maybe we didn't. You make the call. Uh, I will say this, that that is not a hologram he's looking at. Those are the serpent seed. They are the Nakash fallen angels, seraphim fallen angels, which was what he was actually referring to. That was not a hybrid. That was an actual fallen angel if it can turn into a chair or a tree, or whatever. But the hybrids are the first generation of hybrids are called the Nakash, and that those are the reptilians from the Seraph fallen angels, and they rule our planet now in human form, and that is what beguiled Eve. Over to you, Zen. Yeah, this is a, a fascinating and interesting, um, and it, of course, this is absolutely biblical, and it falls right in line with Revelation 12, with the mention of the dragon, that old serpent, um, that this is an aspect of the mythology and the biblical narrative, which 
is very difficult for people to wrap their minds around. But when you study the ancient stories, the accounts of the ancient mysteries, that this is the truth which comes forth, which um, also for those that are interested this Saturday, I will be on Now You See TV with David Carrico and John Pounders on the Midnight Ride, and we will be expounding upon the Nakash and the connections of these dragon, seraphim um, type angelic beings, the demonic legion, that this is the, the powers, the principalities, the rulers of darkness, the wickedness in high places, which being the I at the top of the Illuminati pyramid are in control of all of the organizations and the assemblies of secret societies, these brotherhoods and sisterhoods of, of people. Uh, and a lot of them, as Paul says, are hybrid and they are also uh, of the seed of the serpent and they are descendants, blood relation. As Dan uh, to the serpent, to the devil, to that ancient dragon, as Daniel says, um, they will try to intermingle themselves among the seed of men. That this is the esoteric aspect of what's really going on here in world. And yes, I know it totally, totally sounds off the wall and just bizarre and beyond imagination or incomprehension but yet this is the reality of even those that like princess diana that had direct relationships and interacted with the royal families and saw firsthand witness and shared in testimony these things before she was murdered in blood sacrifice and that these, these are the assertions that are made by a lot of those that come out of these Illuminati bloodlines and connections that being born into them and even being at a high level participants within the rituals and the ceremonies and the sacrifice and the offering of victim, blood, children, all of these things. Um, that these are all behaviors that go back to very ancient times and are connected to the pagans and even Israel in falling away, offering their children to um, Chemosh, Moloch, um, the Astarte, these different pagan gods and goddesses that they are connected to the unholy trinity, the counterfeit system which has been established to sweep away, to lead astray, and to get mainstream churchianity uh, involved in paganism and idolatry, and that this is what is predominant within the mainstream communities whether they consider themselves to be true believers or not, because they are still involved in pagan ritual, they support a pagan calendar system, um, support everything that is counterfeit. Um, you know, as, as far as pagan holidays, all of these things, and so they are led astray and unwillingly, uh, well not recognizing that they are participating in these kind of things. And that, um, just as it said in Revelation 12, which I opened the show with, the ancient dragon, that old serpent, has deceiveth the whole world. And so the reality of what is described in that clip, we had uh, Thomas Costello um, a very long time ago, a whistleblower that also came out of the Dulce underground base with evidence snuck it out and in sharing it and making it public he ended up disappearing 
and he was never heard from again. Uh, and then we have individuals like Phil Schneider, which speak about the the government and their interactions with these powers, these, um, you know, this particular ancient presence, because as I describe in my book, they were here, they were cast out, they rebelled against the Most High God before ever Adam as modern humanity had ever even been created. And that the Nakash, that old serpent, is in deceiving Adam and Eve, caused our ancestors to fall and to be banished and exiled here to the earth where they were already um, in presence. And so this is why we see, according to the ancient record and to the archaeological record, we see the worship of the feathered serpent worldwide during the antediluvian times. And this is one of the things that we will be covering specifically in show this Saturday, talking about the worship of the feathered serpent and how in understanding this, it shows you that indeed the war in heaven as described in Revelation 12, it's not a future event, but that it had occurred in our very ancient past. And that Enoch describes this as having occurred on the second day, but the rebellion goes back to the first day with the separation of light and darkness, the forces of good and evil. And that's where the rebellion takes place, that when Yeshua was uh, brought forth as the light and given dominion over the angelic hierarchy, that was the cause for Lucifer to find and to be jealous and to have as origin the iniquity within him. And then tempting one third of the angels to join him in rebellion, went to war against Christ and was cast out for it. And that's why they are now banished to uh, below the firmament and are entrapped in case, encapsulated here until the harvest. And they know that their time is almost up. The blooming of the fig tree, all of that is playing out. And that's why we see in our generation the acceleration of knowledge and the increasing of it in such manner that all of these, what sound to be just farcical um, concepts and ideologies coming forth as truth and being confirmed by eyewitness accounts as um, shared by Colonel Essie. Amen, Brother Zen. I, I like to use scripture in John 8, 38. I speak that which I have seen with my father, capital F, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father, lowercase f. Notice how there's a capital F and lowercase f. Uh, details are important. And then in, in Titus 1.10, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. And then in John 8.46, I'm sorry, 8.47, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Doing a word study just on the word of, that's how, how much Brother John and I dig deep on Weekly Word. Ye are not of God. And when you look up the word of, Strong's 1537, it has denoting origin. So ye did not origin, originate of God. That's what it's saying. All right, we'll be right back, everyone. Uh, welcome back, everybody, for second hour. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. Uh, this is Momentary Zen, and I have a special guest this evening with me, Professor Truth. Uh, Professor, give out your website contact information uh, once more and where people can go to uh, listen to your shows. And also, um, if you are still opening up your, uh, your listserv as far as your email uh, updates, um, if people wanted to join that, uh, how they could contact you to do so. 
Okay, that's fine. My until I get my website going, my email, which people can join my list, be truth w christ at msn.com. Just send me and say add to your list truth w christ at mikesandmc.com. My YouTube is under truth w christ, so search Professor Truth Truth W Christ with kind. SoundCloud, get, get them up quickly. That would be also a truth of the Christ SoundCloud. All right, excellent. Um, I want to uh, share a really quick passage. This is from the Sibling Oracles, and it talks about the great contest, which is part of the premise of what we're discussing here, and then we'll uh, afterwards go into uh, the other portions of what Paul would like to cover this evening, but it says, Days not a few, and then will be displayed from heaven a crown for contest unto men who wrestle, and then there shall be again a mighty contest of triumphal march into the heaven sky, and it shall be for all men in the world and have the fame of immortality and every people shall then in the immortal contest strive for splendid victory, for no one there can shamelessly with silver buy a crown, for unto them will the pure Christ adjudge that which is due and crown the ones approved, and gave his martyrs an immortal prize who carry on the contest unto death, and unto chaste men who run their race well, Will he the incorruptible reward of the prize give, and to all men allot that which is due? And also the strange nations and those who have regard, uh, oh, sorry, the, the, that which is due, and also to strange nations that live a holy life and know one God. Um, and so we can see that the whole meaning and purpose of the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent is to determine once more our allegiance because it was during our pre-existence and prior to the war in heaven that how we acted and how we behaved and how we uh cited according to the war in heaven that in my opinion as and as I show in my work is what determined our election for being here and born into certain situation and circumstance in this lifetime just as it says with uh, Jacob being favored and Esau hated that the only way you can make sense of the Lord God the Most High, hating a child that had not yet been born is, is because of our pre-existence and because of behavior which then led to the election which then determined our circumstances for this lifetime. Otherwise, how in any way would it make sense that God would hate a child that had not yet even been born to commit sin. And so, unless you understand pre-existence, understand the first world age, those kind of things which are alluded to within the scripture, things like Yeshua knowing us before the foundations of the world, uh, that some were predestinated uh, to be counted, numbered among the elect and doing the work that they do, especially with that of the apostles, uh, as it says in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, and 2 Timothy and 2 Thessalonians also reference um, that in like Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, how Jeremiah uh, was told by the word of the Lord that he was known before he ever entered into the womb of his mother that he had been ordained to be a prophet unto the nations. And so these things are very important and critical for understanding who we are, why we are here, and what all of this is really about. 
because those having grasp of the larger concepts of these um, biblical teachings can help one to come to remembrance on why it is we are really here and what we are really here to do. And that all of us, as long as you choose to honor your calling, all of us have special role and mission for serving the kingdom and, and but that most people ignore that calling. Uh, as I said, you know, many are called, but um, few heed that call. And so uh, the very important concepts, and this is also part of, you know, the things that Paul and I have spoken upon in great detail with what he references as angel fall and what I uh, write about as Skyfall in my seventh book, uh, The Angels of Destiny. Paul? Professor? Yes, and I intended, I'm not sure we're going to get to it, I intended to go into Angel Fall and Theomatics, the basis later, to show that the Bible is a supernatural book written out time of, outside of time and space. But back to your point of whatever verse you read prior to this introduction, during the introduction, it emphasized righteousness and holiness. And during the commercial break, I'm known as a sand shark. I'm not against people, but I'm against false doctrine. During the commercial break, there was a whole lot of emphasis on fear is an illusion of the mind. Fear is just imaginary. You don't need to fear. Well, that would be not what the Bible says. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, fear God. Jeremiah 2, 11 says, be horribly afraid. Okay, so you got to be careful. Um, there's a th th right now. There's a battle for a, the soul harvest at the final conflict, as you know, Zen's book, the, the final conflict, the the final conflict as heaven and earth merge, as above, so below converge into the final war of the heavens, the final battle. You need to be horribly afraid. Jeremiah 2.11. So don't listen to these people that say fear is an illusion of the mind. And soon you will be horribly afraid unless you repent and seek Jesus Christ in truth, not the way all these talking heads tell you, from your heart in repentance. What did Jesus say? Repent and be saved. Okay? So that's all the preaching I'll do for now. But you need to be horribly afraid for what's coming. And maybe I'll play the cloning clip now to, to force that point. Um, Let me make one comment here really quick uh, to elaborate just upon what you have said as well. Um, this, a lot of uh, the teachings and a lot of the people that are hosts on this network come from a new age stance. And a lot of people in the world also teach that we need to depend upon ourselves and humanity needs to to save ourselves. And that's just not going to happen. Uh, that it says within the scriptures that unless the days be shortened, there should be no flesh left. And that the reason why Yeshua had to come into the flesh, be born of a virgin, die on the cross in order to bring a forgiveness of sins to all of humanity, including uh, those that, you know, some that were born into some of these Illuminati bloodlines that come out of it and that accept him as Savior Messiah um, is because he is the way and the truth and the light. And a lot, most of the world will deny this and will be deceived by the New Age theology that says that we can aspire to be gods ourselves and that in doing so we can save ourselves. That is all deception. And that is all, um, you know, really part of the counterfeit, uh, the Luciferian, the beast system of uh, there, you know, we don't need a savior Messiah. And that what is taught in the Bible is all uh, based on mythologies and that there were, you know, prior, uh, some of these pagan mythologies would speak about and, and try to put over in, in teaching that uh, Christ had come again as an ascended master previously as like uh, Buddha or whoever, uh, but that simply is not the case. 
if you really do your research and you look into uh, all of, because there's more written about Christ coming into the flesh, being born, and even the stars, the Maserat, the, the, the story of the 12 constellations in the Zodiac, they talk about his being born of a virgin, uh, as it says in Genesis chapter 3, that he would be the, the fulfillment of the seed of the woman crushing the head of the serpent that this is what is depicted and uh, shown and encoded into the stars and that he was the one that fulfilled all of the prophecies as laid out within the scriptures and the fact that they are 100% accurate uh, and that all of them have been fulfilled in the manner that they were laid out by the apostles, the prophets, and the patriarchs. Uh, hundreds and sometimes even thousands of years in advance because uh, even Adam was told when he was cast out of paradise that Christ would come into the flesh to redeem him and to rectify the fall. Uh, the fact that all of this um, is prophetic shows that the gospel was inspired by our creator and uh, the one that established the creation and made us in his image and so um there's no denying this once you do research on it uh, it the bible affirms itself as absolutely accurate um professor and then if you want to play that clip yeah these breaks come quick on the show so you made yeah, a okay. po you made a comment about esau and jacob i loved esau i hated and Kind of like I say with Pastor Eli with Christian identity, he's 100% complete, but not, I mean, correct, but not 100% complete. And Zan, I think your your version of Jacob, I loved and Esau, I hated was 100% correct, but I think I can add more to it. And what and that more is God saw into the future that Esau would would f commit a grievous sin, which which is breeding into the only cursed seed line of the serpent that is in the book of Obadiah. There's only one cursed bloodline, and it's the Edomite, Edomian, Canaanite. And Esau knowingly, willfully married into that bloodline, and you get your blood from the father. And therefore, that's God knowing the future, that his holy seed would, would pervert itself by marrying into the only cursed bloodline, Edomite. Um, that's why he hated Esau also, in addition to the reason pre You also mentioned the fig tree. I, I don't want. I, I'll, I'm only going to mention one thing. Remember, I said it was a pandemic and counterfeit. Most people believe you're you're not coming in clear, and I think it's because you're talking too fast. Slow down just a little bit. Cause, um, <laughs> trying to get a little cutting out. Can you hear me now, Zen? One, yeah. Two. Uh -huh. Okay, the fig tree generation. There's two: a counterfeit and a holy. The holy actually is based on the 745 BC dispersion of the 12 northern tribes. There was 10 northern tribes, but Judah and Benjamin joined them. And that dispersion happened in 745 BC. And if you apply the seven times seven prophecy of 1220 years, you come to the day of 1776, the day Amirica, kingdom of my people, the regathering of the new Israel was formed in America. That's the holy version. And if you recall, the fig tree was cursed by Jesus Christ and it died. And there's a curse on today's Jerusalem, and that curse will is an eternal curse until the second coming. And that's in Jeremiah 25, 18, Jeremiah 42, 18, and Zechariah 14, 11. So people are worshiping the cursed city and the false fig tree, although I will agree they base that seven times seven prophecy on the southern Judah and Benjamin dispersion in 606, 7, or 8 BC, however you want to count it. And they kind of twist a few dates, but they got to twist their dates. But it's still a fulfillment. I'm not denying it's a fulfillment, but it's the counterfeit. It's the unholy fulfillment of the fig tree into 1948. Today's Israel, which is not a place, but you've been told it's a place. Ishrael means man of God. And Jacob was the bloodline. Jacob, Isaac, thy seed shall be called. So you got the holy Amirica kingdom of my people fulfilled in in 1776, when America was founded to the day, and then you got the unholy one, 
that they call the fig tree generation. And it's still a fulfillment of prophecy, because it, but it's a counterfeit. And that was fulfilled in 1947, 48. I'll play this clip, and I bet you they're going to cut me off in the break. Now, this is on cloning. And I took a 40-minute clip and cut it down to about five minutes. Get into some of the uh, strange and bizarre. Uh, I'd like to hear about the reptilian shape-shifting as well as the clones. You can pick which one you want to talk about. No, you pick it. You pick the everything that we talk about today. All right. Well, why don't you tell the clone story? And uh, yeah. I have two clone stories. And the one that was the best one was the one in, um, I have several, but the one that was the best one was happened to me in California. And again, I don't know where I was in California. I knew I was there. And that was the bad part about my job. I rarely knew where I was at. I sometimes could tell I was in the United States, but could swear to it. This time they told me where I was at, California. There was a Marine base there at that time. That's what they told me. And you were a sniper. I was a sniper. And they're using sniper guards everywhere at their base now. Why do you think they're using sniper guards? Because the signs aren't good enough anymore. And they will shoot and kill you, even children. So obey them. But anyway, I was at this base, and I was told there was a lieutenant colonel and his wife. They had seen some strange things coming in and out of this base because we have people not from this world. It's real. And he said, we also have clones. I really didn't. I knew the clone meant. I said, what do you mean by that? We have children. We have people here that look exactly alike down to the freckle and last hair on their body. And we can make a hundred of them or one of them off of an original body. Is the original body alive? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. The dead bodies are suspended in a fluid with all kinds of lines up to their head. And we keep them alive only to use the brain, even though they can't function. The brain is a memory chip that retains information. And we are learning how to extract it. And I shook my head. I said, that's enough. I said, what do you want me to do with this colonel? He goes, he has the clearance, but we didn't want him up here. So we are going to let him up here and not show him everything. He already knows about the alien agenda, so it's where we're going to take him. And he's going to have his wife, and they're going to be coming up in a Cadillac. And it'll be a pearl-colored one. And they're going to be a light. You know where the light is? I go, yeah, it's about two, about two clicks away from where the entrance is. When he comes, that's where we tell you when it's green, it's okay. When it's yellow. You look at it and report to us too and tell us what you see. But if it's red, you shoot to kill the minute you see the first thing coming around that corner. I said, okay. So I said, after I'm waiting. So what was what was the thing turning green, yellow, or red? It was just like a street light. And what it was was uh, because there was more than one sniper, like I told you today. And it, we it, at this base, just like S4, not Area 51, but S4, we knew nobody's allowed up there. Now, you see some civilian driving up there, you know, uh, no way. You're not getting in there. But so this... the red, white, and green. So, But they had the visitors that came that were high-ranking uh, or in Congress or something. They were allowed to come in there. And the green light meant that let this car go. It's okay. Don't even have to worry about it. The yellow light meant when it was on, it was uh, they were everywhere. When the yellow light was on, they want us to look through our scope and report what we seen to confirm what they know. And then they would either turn it green or, or red. If it was red, that means that the next car, I was, I was at a place at about 1,100 to 1,200 yards away. There was a wide curve there. That's all I could see was that curve. And it went almost in a circle. We used to call them butt kissing curves. Came up a hill and around this way here to the entrance. It's red. The next thing, no matter what it is, even if it's an accident, because you're like anybody, you kill. And I want every sniper, six snipers, 
in your area. And I want, I want, I better find six holes. You know, and they better be dead. There better be six bullets shot. Okay. So they come around there. And finally, the green light came on. And oh, yeah. And before I tell you that, there's a strobe light that comes on first to let you know that something's approaching. And then when it passes the, I guess, laser going across the road, they said it, it what color the light's going to be. And it turned green. And I knew it was that colonel. He said the colonel had gray hair and he's old. And his wife, was young and pretty good looking in her 30s. He was in, he's about 60. I looked and she was better than good looking with her. And it's them, so I didn't worry about it green light. Uh, and I'm just getting in greater detail and I happen to think about some of this too because I want to be accurate. Then and you must have seen him another time at night. I seen him where, on. Where you said a lieutenant uh, had to give you, was going to give yeah. you a signal. And at that time was at night? Yeah, and I seen him at several different places. I've seen him so many times. Uh, it would take me hours to tell you what I've seen. seen. What, the clones? Yeah. But this was the most extravagant display I've ever seen. It was scary. Anyway, they brought a, like a picnic table out there and they were sitting out there and one of the officers smoked cigarettes, smoked cigar, and they were drinking wine. And then food was brought out there. And then I guess it was time. And he said, they're coming. They all stood up and they were looking in there and these beautiful playboy centerfold looking type girls came out dressed in the same uniform all of them looked the same and we were making fun saying the man was to have do uh bigamy you know or whatever they call that have polygamy me, polygamy more than have more than one wife that'd be the way to do it because they were, you know and you know it's one of them things where well, i wish i was drunk so i could see 24 of you <laughs> And anyway, they all looked the same. And they stood there and they didn't blink or move or shift their eyes or anything. And they were human. How many of them were there? Twelve. They were human. But they looked alike. And three men came out briefly and went back in and they looked alike. And all of them, including the women, had blonde hair and blue eyes. Like an Aryan race. But I'll never forget the beauty. It was Austrian beauty. And I have never and, and any ever seen to this day a woman or a woman that would captivate you with beauty like those. And I guess that was part of their skill. You know, I mean, it, you had to hesitate if you seen one. So I seen him talking and I thought, well, what are they doing? They're just standing there. And he was looking at him and he was, you could tell in his face he was well pleased. So now I'm starting to think, well, this guy's part of the program. He had to be. And they were, I couldn't read the lips of the guy, but he was giving them an order. So I just had to wait. And one of them stepped out, raised the camera so I can stand up. She stepped out of line, clearly. And they all had a 45 in their holster. And she turned and looked at the other one and they were smiling. And then I lip sync, he said, shoot her. And she pulled out her gun. The other one was still smiling and she shot her and real blood and brains and everything flew at the back of her head. And she went back in line. Now, don't ever ask me how it works or nothing because I don't want to know. So anyway, that's an, another interesting for your listeners. You could believe it. Maybe we made it all up. I knew the break would come. Over to you, sir. We'll be right back, everyone. In some of the ancient manuscripts which speak about the corruption of the genome, genome for not only humanity but the creatures of the world during the time um, of Yared before the flood of Noah's day that even Christ referenced this in Matthew 24, Mark 13 and Luke 21 where he spoke about, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the second coming of the Son of Man, in speaking about, in my opinion, the corruption that was going on and the experimentation, the genetic um, miscegenation, as it says in the Book of the Giants, um, and that the genome 
of even plants here as we see with the genetically modified food crops that there would be animal DNA introduced into vegetables and and different plants and different crops and that um, these genetically modified food crops and also creatures as Paul was alluding to with the cloning that we don't even understand the kind of stuff that is happening in these joint deep underground bases where the these alien presences which are nothing more than the demonic fallen angels that were cast out and rebelled so long ago it's the same wickedness in high places um, that has been rebelling against God before even we were cast down and joined them here upon the earth. And Barossa speaks about in the ancient days, gives great description of some of the hybrid creatures that were brought into being uh, during even um, previous to, uh, you know, the time of modern humanity and gives a description of some of these hideous beings. Uh, I'll share this passage or portion of it. It says, uh, there was a, a time in which there existed nothing but darkness and abyss of waters wherein resided most hideous beings which were produced of a, produced of a twofold principle. There appeared men, some of whom were furnished with two wings, others with four and with two faces. They had one body, but with two heads, the one that of a man, the other of a woman, and likewise in their sexual organs, both male and female. Other human figures were to be seen with the legs and horns of goats. Some had horses' feet, while others united the hindquarters of a horse with the body of a man resembling in shape the centaurs. Bulls, likewise, were bred there with the heads of men, and dogs with fourfold bodies terminated in their extremities with the tails of fishes. Horses also with the heads of dogs, men too, and other animals with the heads and bodies of horses and the tails of fishes. In short, there were creatures in which were combined the limbs of every species of animals. In addition to these, fishes, reptiles, serpents, with other monstrous animals which assumed each other's shape and countenance, of all which were preserved delineations in the temple of Belus at Babylon. And so this is the, you know, Barossus mentioning this in very ancient writings. And this is the stuff that is being repeated and ongoing in deep underground bases and other black ops sites where they are doing the uh, Dr. Moreau-ish type experimentation, uh, genetic manipulation, and that even Timothy Costello, one of the aspects of the work and the information that he released was pictures and images of these hybrid creatures as they were made and, and created in this nightmare hall that Paul had re referenced, Professor had re referenced. And so, th yes, these things sound just bewildering, especially for those of you that have never looked into the esoteric aspects of what we are dealing with as world. But these kind of things are also mentioned within the scriptures. There are uh, passages um, in the canonical text and the extra biblical text which make mention of hybrid creatures and hybrid beings and how we have been contending with um, dealing with these manifestations of this spiritual wickedness, the legion as they take on human form and possessing human bodies. Even when Christ, Yeshua, confronted legion and they asked him, First, they recognize him as the Christ, as the Son of God, and they asked him, have you come to torment us before the time? Meaning that they know that at some point their time is up, 
and that judgment comes with his return or with his second coming. And so at some point the gig is up, but even with the counterfeit blooming of the fig tree, the, this is the last generation that the timeline of the New World Order and the speed has been accelerated. The agenda has been accelerated um, because they recognize that we alive now are the last generation and that they have but short time in order to pull the wool over our lives and to fulfill the agenda of the New World Order uh, and this global domination as they have been trying to institute for millennia now. And so we are at the end game. We are seeing the unfolding, uh, the, as it said in the Matthew 24, where Christ speaks about the blooming of the fig tree and the, uh, our being the last generation, that we would see all these things fulfilled uh, and that we would be the generation that witnesses his return. Professor. Amen. Revelation 12, as you know, Zen, has a star alignment coming up September 23rd, 2017. Right. And I call it the beginning of the end. And I know you just recently did a show on that, which was very good. By the way. Since you're on to the ge last generation or gene iteration or gene iteration, uh, let me go into Yahweh the code. The name yod heh vah -Heh is a is coded within every biochemical function in our body especially within the life-giving DNA RNA matrix. The divine name transposed upon the mechanisms of the matrix coding is a primal factor in bioengineering, both for the present as well as for the future. That's what we're talking about. The tetragrammaton, yod vah of the Father's sacred name is comprised of three, there's your go, three again, three sacred letters, yod he and Va. The tetragrammaton connects with the fourth nitrogenous basis most commonly found in DNA and RNA, which each contain two pyrimidines and two purines. Both DNA and RNA contain adenine and guanine, both of which are purines, and cytosine, which a, is a pyrimidine. However, DNA contains the pyrimidine base thymine, while RNA contains uracil. The tetragrammaton of the father's sacred name is used within a decade Decadelta system. And that's interesting because Anthony Patch teaches a decahedron. So just keep that in mind. The decadelta system. The decadelta system is 10 light emanations working through a pyramidal conic section, which arranges the blueprint of life. The pyramidal conic section controls the primary activities, genetic blueprint of life, blueprint of life for a given order. This blueprint unfolds as a series of grids which interconnect as a spiral out of the master template of the conic section. Therefore, the 10 light emanations set in motion a superhelix pulse which allows the grids to interconnect, coordinating a coding activity. This interconnection in our world of biological form sets in motion the interlinkage for the tetrahelix, the 10 light emanations send out the major code frequencies for all levels of meta ordering vis-a-vis -vis light is the coding function. So I wanted to, uh, they wouldn't call me the professor if I didn't hit you with something pretty extreme. Um, but I wanted to give the science and the quantum physics behind what Zen is saying earlier about light. Can I, back in the day when I did an interview with Dr. Deagle, we would, we would call it light congealing into form, but it's basically the wave particle duality principle, light slowing down, and some people call, call you know, in simple terms, call it frozen light. But in, in this says a decahedron or decadelta uh, light codes, and that's your 10 strands of angelic DNA that I talked about earlier that you can't see with in 3D. You cannot see it. And then you have the two, the 10 plus two, in 3D, which we call our double helix, and then you have the triple helix or the or the conduit, which is a light for the spirit of truth or Sophia for those who seek Jesus Christ in truth and repent. And that activates the whole thing. Isn't that amazing, Zen? 
Yeah, it is absolutely amazing. And, um, and, and I think it's important for you to tie together the quantum mechanics and the, uh, you know, as far as the physics behind light stepping down in vibration to create what we see as the visible world. Because these are some of the advanced teachings which are spoken about in the Nakamati Codices, which being misunderstood and misinterpreted are maligned by a lot of individuals that don't understand them. Um, well, you know, of course, most people don't even understand the 66 books of the Bible and so are not able to even grasp or to, to read or study uh, these more advanced concepts and teachings, but there are those who can. And um, even in Second Esdras, there's a, the story of how after the destruction of the Holy Temple uh, by Nebuchadnezzar and how the, um, the people, Israel, the Hebrew Israelites were removed to Babylon and exiled there for 70 years, that all the ancient manuscripts were destroyed. And Ezra was commissioned by the Most High God to bring together five scribes, fast writing scribes, and they had the Holy Spirit poured upon them so that they could bring forth the ancient text and rewriting them, make them available to the promised seed line once more so that they could be passed down um, throughout the generations. And this is even the legacy of what we have now. But all of that had disappeared, but Ezra was commissioned to write 200 plus books, but he was told to keep 70 of them, um, not for the masses or for a viewing by the, the mainstream believers, but these would be for the elect themselves. And so they were considered secret teachings. And so even in what we see referenced in the Nakamati Codices, Many of those texts, many of those books open with these are the secret teachings of James, John, Thomas, as told to them by Christ before this was after his resurrection and before he ascended to the right hand of the Father in taking um, a seat upon his heavenly throne. And so these are the teachings that he gave to the apostles as explanations for the greater mysteries. And these are things that he showed even unto the angels, which we were part of the preexistent uh, sons of God, the angelic hierarchy, as it says in Psalms 82, where it speaks of um, Yahweh governing among the gods in, with the in seated among the council of the mighty that we were part of that um, the angelic hierarchy prior to the rebellion of the angels and the fall of one third and then the later incarnation of the majority of those uh, that you know not determining their true allegiance during the first world age have been put into flesh form in order to determine through lifetime and through the acceptance of Christ as the way and the truth and the light, whether they want to be numbered and counted among the elect. And so that's what this life is all about. That's the whole premise of the great contest. And um, I'll share this one passage. It says this. He revealed the everlasting things and all the unknown were known. And those things difficult to interpret and secret, he revealed. And as for those who dwell in silence with the first thought, he preached to them and he revealed himself to those who dwell in darkness. And he showed himself to those who dwell in the abyss and to those who dwell in the hidden treasuries. He told ineffable mysteries and he taught unrepeatable doctrines to all those who became the sons of light. Uh, this is a passage from 
uh, one of the Nag Hammadi codices. And again, it reveals how even before we fell and incarnated into flesh form, that the angels were taught the secrets. And that's why when it says that the angels rebelled, they brought down the heavenly mysteries and teaching them to men and teaching them to humanity caused them to fall and to be led astray and led them into rebellion against the Most High God. And this is what the devil is even here. Uh, while we are in flesh form, living through this carnality, the duality of this world, which teaches us through the knowledge of good and evil, this is the whole premise of the New World Order in trying to lead astray. Because they know at the end of this that they are condemned, and they do not want any of the sons of men to inherit the ordinances which they abandon. And so they want us to fall with them and to be condemned with them. And so um, that's why we have the contest. The war in heaven is now within our hearts and our minds and our spirits. And so uh, the temptations of every moment of every day, uh, we have to determine who we are going to serve, and you can't serve two masters. Professor, we got yes, about four minutes, brother. Yeah, I wanted to go over Second Baruch because Baruch was an apostle, a disciple of Prophet Jeremiah, and it's exactly correct that they want all of your souls to be counted with the tares. So very quickly, the sign of the coming judgment. If this doesn't, this they told us there was nothing written in the intertestamental period, the 400 years between the uh, Malachi and the Gospel of uh, Matthew, but in fact there were things written. One was uh, Second Baruch. The signs of the coming judgment, when a stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth. Does, I want you guys, as I'm reading this, to think about, is, that, is this not prophesying what we are experiencing now, while people walking around in stupor looking at their cell phones? When a stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth. He answered and said unto me, you too shall be preserved till that time, for that sign which the Most High will work for the inhabitants of the earth in the end of days. This, therefore, shall be the sign when a stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth, and they shall fall into many tribulations, and again, when they shall fall into great torments. And it will come to pass when they say in their thoughts, by reason of their much tribulation, much fear, remember, the much horrible, fearful, the mighty one doth no longer remember the earth. Yes, it will come to pass when they abandon hope that the time will then awake. Now, I'm going to jump down to verse where it says, and stupor of heart, and then number three, the signs of the end, and they shall hate one another and provoke one another to fight, and the mean shall rule over the honorable. Are we seeing that today in the elections and all that? And I don't get into politics, okay? But are we seeing that today? The mean are ruling over the honorable, and those of low degree shall be extolled above famous, number four. And the many shall be delivered into the hands of the few. Number five, and the wise shall be silent, and the foolish shall speak. Neither shall the thought of men be confirmed, nor the counsel of the mighty, nor shall the hope of those who hope be confined. Number six, and when those things which were predicted have come to pass, then shall confusion fall upon all men, and some of them shall fall in battle, and some of them shall perish in anguish. Number seven, and some of them shall be destroyed by their own. Then the most high peoples or elect whom he has prepared before, and they shall come and make war with the leaders that shall then be left. That Psalms 2, as I mentioned. And it shall come to pass that whoever gets safe out of the war shall die in the earthquake. And whosoever gets safe out of the earthquake shall be burned by fire. And whosoever gets safe out of fire shall be destroyed by famine. Number nine, and it shall come to pass that whoever of the victors and the vanquished gets safe out of and escapes all these things aforesaid will be delivered into the hands of my servant, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, for all the earth shall devour its inhabitants. Brother Zen. Amen. Yeah, there's um, 
there's a, a book in the Revelation of St. John the Theologian that speaks about at the time when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that the earth will be destroyed, that there will be a new heaven and the new earth, that the earth will be prepared as a bride for the coming of the bridegroom, that Christ, because he's going to descend here to the earth and he's going to live with us and rule here for the millennial reign, that the earth will be recreated in innocence and without evil. And so that's when uh, those things that you described also will come to play in preparing uh, the earth as a bride for the return of the bridegroom. And so I do recommend people that uh, read that text. And I was just reading earlier um, the second book of the sibling oracles where it speaks about the end of the age and it gives great detail as to all of the things that we're talking about here. And then I would also say that um, the uh, Baruch, one of the scribes, and Ezra, also another scribe, during the diaspora, Second Ezra and the Concealed Book of Baruch, that they cover this also in great detail. We appreciate you, Professor. God bless all of you. Good night. Thank you, Zan. God bless. Thank you, too, brother. Shalom, all. Radio at 4.30.